So, this is a quick version of a quick demo that I did in our class today through virtual instruction. And I wanted to videotape it separately so that I could post it alone. <coughs> now, it's about angular motion and when the torque on a spinning object is not parallel to uh, the uh, angular momentum that it already has. Now this is a kind of a classic problem, a classic example of what's going on. But I, I used to be a serious cyclist and I, and I actually had a, a, what used to be a really good bicycle wheel around. Now the hub is not in the shape that it should be, but this actually keeps spinning pretty well. It, it's a reasonably light wheel. Now we do lots of demos with heavier wheels where we you know, try to have people wiggle it and see what happens. <clears throat> but I'm just going to use gravity in this demo and I'm going to talk to uh, exactly what directions things really go in. And for that you obviously really need 3D, uh, which is why I want to do a video of it. it. It might be a little bit hard to see, but I'll try to keep close enough so that you can see what's going on. Now, the wheel now is spinning, and this is the easy direction for me to spin it in. I'm going to take it in my right hand. Do that with my left hand, okay? Now, the direction of the angular momentum right now okay, is perpendicular to the plane of rotation, so it's horizontal, right, along the axis here. And using the right hand rule, following around the direction of motion, my right hand, and I'm sorry if it looks like left in the video, but this is my right hand, <coughs> is pointed to my right. Okay, right out here. Toward me when I stand this way. And that's the way I'm going to stand when I do uh, the interesting part of this. Now, when I held it by both of these, gravity is pulling down on it, and I've supported it in these two places, gravity pulls not only at the center of mass. The center of mass is in the middle of the axle there. Right there. If I let go of one of these, okay, so I'm gonna, at some point I'm going to be spinning it, I'm going to let go of that. If I, if I let go of that, normally it's just going to flop down. Obviously. Right? There's, a, there's gravity pulling downward. And I'm holding it here. So this is my possible axis of rotation. Center of rotation. And the torque that gravity exerts will make it, the whole wheel turn that way. <clears throat> if it's spinning, it's already got an angular momentum. But before I even get there, I can talk about the direction of the torque due to gravity. The radial vector from my pivot point to the center of mass is approximately that way, horizontal along the axis, and I can't put my finger right in the axis, but it's right around there. Force due to gravity is down. So I right hand rule. R cross F. The torque is toward me. And indeed, when there's no angular momentum to start with, I drop it. The rotation is in that plane. Obvious. Simple. No problem. Uh, but now, I've got initial angular momentum. The torque is toward where I'm standing now. So the angular momentum is toward where I'm standing now. If I want to exert a torque, it means that the time change of angular momentum should be along the torque. So that means it should do something like this. Let me do the experiment. See what happens. Okay. In fact, I am, in fact, you can see now, if you look closely, not even holding it, just balancing it on there. And indeed, it does just what I said. Uh, if I had grabbed the other side, the R vector is the opposite. So the torque is the opposite. And the spin is in the opposite direction. I could try spinning it the other way, but frankly it's a little difficult. I'm just not that coordinated. Uh, I may make a little file uh, to go along with this, but this video file will be posted today. Uh, I may actually make it public, but I'll also post it on Blackboard today.